name is Diane Proctor. I'm the president of the League of Women Voters. And I want to begin by thanking Fowler Library for giving us this remarkable facility to use for the First Friday uh, uh, presentation. It is a, it's a privilege which we take not lightly. Um, and so thank you. And I also want to thank artist uh, Boardman and her committee, uh, the Concord Town Government uh, Study Committee, uh, no longer a study committee, but a committee, uh, for helping to orchestrate the First Fridays and figuring out when to have them, how to have them, uh, what particular issue is pertinent right now. Um, on in yesterday's uh, uh, Concord Journal, one may have seen a, an, an editorial, or a letter to the editor, mm -hmm. and that letter to the, the editor suggested something that I feel I must begin by at least addressing in a non-defensive, but just very straightforward way. Um, suggested that the League of Women Voters had one sponsored Bill McKibben uh, as, as at the Un uh, Unitarian Church's uh, fantastic forum, I gather, last week. Uh, for the record, we did not. Um, and not that we would not have, but I mean, we did not. Um, and secondly, uh, there was the suggestion that, that we were in favor of the increase, the 100% increase in terms of costs um, for our electric bills in the town. And again, wow. again, on October 1st, we invited the Light Board to come and speak to the League on a First Friday so that we could explore what we thought was perhaps a rather ambitious increase in costs um, of electricity for the town at a time when we are um, suffering under many increased costs. So the, while the League has not taken a position on this, uh, it is important to know uh, that, that, there is a, that that was not entirely an accurate statement. Mm -hmm. Uh, it was a letter to the editor, but at least it's now addressed. And it all leans on these first <coughs> writings. I'm carrying with me uh, a copy of the Constitution. I'm carrying it with me because today's panel, and it is a distinguished panel, I mean, it's a privilege to be up here with these people. Um, today's panel is, is about the Fourth Estate. And the fourth estate, as we all know, is stands in, in this particular case. It stands on a three-legged stool called PEG, P-E-G, which is for public access, educational access, and governmental access. And that three-legged stool is therefore going to have many uh, reasons uh, to, and many different entities to want to play a role in, in how CCTV, as it is presently constituted, goes forward um, in the next decade. And so, um, and these are issues of the First Estate. So I would just remind you that in the First Amendment, it says that Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof or abridging the freedom of speech or of the press or the right of people peaceably to assemble and to petition the government for a redress of grievance. And it's on the foundation of that, and of course, a magnitude of law that goes with it. It's not as simple as that sounds, but um, it's on the foundation of that that we, we gather, I think, this morning. Um, why would the League be interested in this um, without, without a position? Because the League studies issues, and it wants the town to be able to study issues and to be well informed as we move forward in anything that we do. Um, the notion of independence of the force of the state from government is not an abstract issue. Perhaps five years ago, we might all have nodded and agreed it's an abstract issue. Recently, um, given, given the, the national uh, behavior and the national forum, we have come to understand that something we perhaps all held rather dear has a, a, a fresh fragility to which we must all be attentive. Uh, the second thing, of course, that on which the League stands is transparency of, of how government behaves, how certain initiatives are taken, how they're presented to the public, and how we move forward. Some of those require votes from the town. Some of those require a vigorous discussion with the town. There are many different ways in which we can exercise a knowledge um, of what is happening in our town government. Um, therefore, we turn to these three people to help us talk about these issues. Uh, court booth on my far left. Uh, everyone knows Court. Uh, 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 Court started CCTV. He was one of the, the, the group that really pioneered this entire operation. <coughs> and from 2004 until 2014, um, he, along with the CCTV board, really ran and managed this corporation. 
Starting in 2015, the government entered in, and that's Kate Hodges. <laughs> and so Kate represents the town government in that regard. Kate, you will actually be the third speaker. Jane's going to be the second speaker. Um, but uh, the, the government stepped in and began, because of state legislation, uh, began to exercise more control over CCTV and particularly its, re its financial resources. Um, and last but not least, of course, we have, and hardly least, we have Jane Hotchkiss, um, who is, and Kate's official title is Assistant Town Manager. So I want to, I want to say that and say that proudly. <laughs> and, the, and then, of course, there's Jane Hotchkiss, who again, everyone knows, and she is the chairman of the select board. And she brings that, that government position and stands firmly on that and represents that decision-making process. So we have education, we have government, we have public interest, um, all three represented here. Uh, and Cord informally is at both education and CCTV, and particularly given his interest in, this is not a, a promotion of that, but his interest in, in joining the school committee. Um, we're interested in this citizens advisory or the cable advisory uh, council. And we hope that that will be discussed at some point. Uh, do they replace, do they enhance the existing CCTV board? What happens to a very experienced and knowledgeable CCTV board and its, its personnel? And there are many questions around how the, the citizens interact with whatever organization moves forward. And we wonder whether any of these particular citizen board oversights, we'd like to hear a distinction between their regulatory authority and their um, persuasive authority. Those are two very different things. Now, why would we bring this up? And then it's up to our panelists to get us started this morning. Um, we had, on, uh, a week ago Sunday, uh, Wendy Sherman was here. And we had a chance to hear her talk about the future of the United States in relationship to uh, international affairs. CCDB came out at 7 o'clock on, on, on a Sunday evening and filmed that for us. Uh, who, would, who would say that they, that for the League and for our citizens, that that would happen again? You know, how are these things adjudicated? How are they decided? How does this work? And so uh, paying atten being attentive to that is something that is important not just to the League, but to all of us. So we begin, um, Court's going to give us some history of CCTV. Jane's going to talk very specifically about the, the, the intellectual kind of construct that she sees about the future, and Kate is going to talk about um, her uh, considerations about the kind of the physical manifestations of all this. <clears throat> Thank you, Diane. Thank you all. Uh, we've got every seat in the house almost filled, except for two in front, uh, which will be filled shortly, I'm sure. Um, I think it's important to have some context to all of this, and I want to, in four or five minutes, uh, give you what I believe is the history of uh, where we have come from, which puts us to today and the questions that Diane has posed. Um, I am a member of the board. I will try to be very clear where I'm speaking for the board and where I'm giving you my personal take or opinion on things and distinguish between the two. Uh, the uh, president of the board and the other officers of the corporation uh, cannot be here. Uh, some of them are behind cameras right now doing their uh, professional work. Um, uh, so I do represent them, and we do have several board members uh, in the room with us today as well. So thank you for, uh, for attending. Of course you would, I know. And CCTV, uh, of course. Court, I'm uh, sorry to interrupt yeah. you. I was meant to say, and I apologize. Please. I was meant to say this is a public meeting, and it is being recorded. <laughs> I've never had to do that before, and I forgot. <laughs> and uh, per perfect timing, because I was uh, noting that we have our CCT videographer here as well. Um, so history. Uh, in 2004, it was rather clear that the town had a problem. Uh, the problem that surfaced that I was paying attention to then, along with Chris Whalen, was that, and many others, I'm sure, was that Comcast announced to Concord and uh, towns throughout Massachusetts that they were shutting down their local studio operations. They wanted out. They wanted out because, frankly, uh, the job wasn't being done very well. The, uh, the studios in various cities and towns were underutilized, staff were bored, staff were disenchanted, 
Uh, if you have time after the meeting, I'll tell you what the studio looked like at the high school and how they spent their time. Uh, but it was, uh, it was un very unfortunate. And it didn't uh, cast uh, any favorable, favorable light on Comcast. They knew it. And uh, rather than try to repair these uh, uh, low-performing studios that were in these cities and towns by virtue of agreements with those cities and towns, they decided to pull out and renegotiate contracts and make it more attractive for cities and towns to produce their own local studios <coughs> and have the production be, uh, if you will, homegrown. Uh, and that's uh, exactly what happened. Chris Whalen, in his wisdom, started to uh, scout around. Correct me if I'm wrong at any point here, Chris. Right uh, so far. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the caveats. <laughs> he scouted around to see what resources we had locally that could uh, fill this void. And one of them, among several, was the Alliance for Teen Safety. Chris, uh, I don't think I exaggerate to say, had this vision that maybe this could be a youth-run thing at the high school. Why not? Well, we couldn't sell it to the uh, Alliance for Teen Safety. This is a group that exists still today, but in another form, supporting volunteer work at the high school, to volunteer, it's called. Um, we went to the radio station, WIQH. Some of you remember we pulled that out of the ashes as part of the Y2K movement. <laughs> no kidding. Um, and it is, is thriving today. You know, the kids adore it, and they should at the high school. Um, and uh, IQH wisely said, no, 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 we have our core mission. We're really good at it. Uh, we're not going to take on TV. Uh, this is where... <coughs> With no solutions uh, coming to the fore, uh, I wrote a check, sent it to the IRS, and set up a nonprofit corporation. And the, by good fortune, I knew nothing about television, videography, <coughs> editing, networking, and it made it very easy to go to very bright people in town and say, uh, no, seriously, to say, you know, I need your help. You're a financial whiz, and you're a videographer, and you're an editor guy, and you work for Channel 2, and, and so on and so forth. And we produced a board of directors that had the requisite knowledge to put this whole thing together. We then went to the town of Concord. We went to the town of Carlisle and said, we're ready and willing to respond to any RFP, any request for proposals you put on the street to use your Comcast monies to direct toward a nonprofit for purposes of PEG operations. And uh, no surprise, we were uh, one of one bidder. Um, although we, we had other people uh, uh, take a close look at it, um, other entities, but um, nonetheless, this local group uh, was the group that. Uh, entered into a contract with the town to produce uh, PEG services. And that, that was the beginning. Uh, it brings us to today, where we have, as you know, three stations. And they are uh, regrettably restricted only to Comcast subscribers, the people who are funding this thing, uh, indirectly, but uh, very much so. Uh, their are subscriber, their franchise fees. and. Uh, the channels are determined by Comcast. We have channel uh, eight, which is the public channel. That's a channel where uh, you can produce anything you want with virtually no boundaries. And uh, if you ask us to air it, we air it. We air it. Uh, how do we keep the content uh, uh, not uh, uh, ugly or hate-filled? How do we make certain that nobody hijacks this thing? Well, the U.S. Constitution says you don't have that option. But no, seriously. So, so what we do is just try to fill it up with good stuff. I know that may not sound politically correct, but if there's enough fine folks producing fine material, your cooking show and your gardening show and your history show and so on and so on and so on, then it would be, uh, um, what, an uncomfortable environment for somebody to come in and uh, do something that they really wreak havoc with the social fabric of this town. They can still do it, 
but it wouldn't be a really uh, comfortable environment for them because we've created another kind of comfortable environment for citizens to use this resource. The second channel is uh, channel 9, and that's the uh, government channel. This one's unique in that anything that is covered in town is gavel to gavel. Thus, there's no editing. It's, it is what it is. That's it, gavel to gavel. Our rule is if we can't tape it gavel to gavel, we don't air it because you don't know what happened with the chunk that's missing. So that uh, has been a, a rule that's never been violated from day one. It makes it easy for us to uh, give you certainty that you saw what happened. Um, the, uh, the, I'll jump way ahead and say uh, the, the mantra from our town manager is more, 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 more. He, to his credit, wants as much in that pipeline as he can with local programming. Well, he'll certainly speak for himself, but I think that's very accurate to say. And he's not alone there, of course. I mean, that's what the channel <coughs> exists for. Uh, there is uh, also the opportunity for any uh, uh, state agency or state official, federal agency or federal official, to give us content and ask that it be aired on Channel 9. And if they ask, the answer is yes. It's not debatable. We'll find a place. And then there is finally Channel 99, and that uh, is the, it used to be Channel 10, easy to find, and then it got lost when Comcast sent it to 99, so they could put, I don't know, some shopping channel for you on Channel 10. Um, and uh, 99 is the school channel. And uh, regrettably, um, personally, I think it's underutilized. We have some teachers and students who make tremendous use of it, but I think the staff and the volunteers would uh, all agree, gosh, we wish there was more of it. When you look around the nation, the, the trend is, and I generalize, but I think there's something to it, uh, the most fertile ground for television is in middle schools, and the most fertile ground for radio stations is high schools. Well, no surprise when you think about it. Uh, you know, who's, uh, who's got their ear glued to music? It's high school kids. Um, and that's well and good. So, but our studio, as you well know, is, is at the new high school. Now, uh, it took us about two years to get things settled down. Remember I said we had a lot of uh, um, disenchanted uh, uh, Comcast employees uh, because they'd all been pitched out of work and they'd been running dormant studios around the uh, around the state. So it took us a little while to find people who could really produce for us in the way that this town envisioned a peg station could be. Uh, so I got to pretend I knew what I was doing for two years and run the thing myself. Um, uh, but again, I didn't do it myself. There were plenty of uh, uh, very capable volunteers, but I was the person who, as you might remember, worked at the high school, so it was easy for me to try to keep things going until uh, we reached the point that we still enjoy today, and that is we've got professional staff who are superb, and I know many of you know uh, the staff, Tamara and Kester and Sam and Mike and uh, Brendan, uh, and uh, we expect them to be hugely responsive to what you want and what you need. And I think when we move ahead today, we're going to be talking responsiveness. What does responsiveness mean in the future? I left the board after six years. That's what you do in this town. And uh, then about two years ago, I came back because there were conversations underway uh, about uh, the future of CCTV. And it was suggested that maybe I would have something to offer by way of some institutional memory. Uh, time will tell if that's going to be valuable, but I hope I'm uh, contributing so far. The current contract that we have with the town of Concord is one that concludes September 30th. We still have an ongoing month-to-month -month agreement with Carlisle and continue to serve them, so it's a dual CC TV for the two towns. And uh, Carlisle is... Uh, uh, really w waiting and watching to see what we do before they know what they want to, uh, what they might do uh, by way of moving forward with PEG television. The two towns contribute uh, uh, the necessary funds each year. It's about an 80-20 ratio, 80 Concord, 20 Carlisle, 
and this is uh, rather uh, closely reflective of both the programming and where it originates and the viewership uh, and the uh, financial burdens put on the two towns to make all of this possible. Last year, the entire budget for the corporation was $377,000 and Concord contributed $291,000. So you have some numbers in mind. Uh, in, if I'm correct, it was in 2016 that the town manager uh, started discussions about non-renewal. So this uh, was a surprise to some people I know who didn't uh, know these conversations were underway, underway, but if I'm correct, the informal conversation started uh, a couple of years ago. And uh, in February 2017, just about a year ago, the town manager brought to the select board a plan for uh, the town to pull CCTV in some form into government operations and would not uh, uh, renew contracts with CCTV or, or anybody. And in July of last year, our board of directors voted to not end the contract early. There had been discussion about uh, severing the contract in somewhere in the middle of the contract period and the Board of Directors said, no, not interested. And so that was the end of that conversation. We moved on. The uh, most recent activity on the part of the Corporation's Board was in January at the Board meeting and then the annual meeting. Uh, by corporate uh, uh, bylaws, we have a membership base to our operations. So we bring in all the members once a year to share everything we can with them about uh, the, the operation. And at that meeting, we did vote to wind down the corporation if there was no renewal. That's our fiduciary responsibility. We have to take care of the corporation. And we engaged an attorney uh, to see that, among many things, uh, the task of distributing the assets back to the two towns was done in a way that uh, was uh, uh, agreed upon by the two towns, by the AG, and by the Board of Directors. So that's underway right now. Um, I'll move away from the board for a minute and my take on things past and say that my, my own observation is that the CCTV board was not clear about the exact town concerns that prompted the decision to end the agreement. That's not to suggest there's a failing one place or another, just to make uh, my point that the, there wasn't the necessary clarity to have the kind of negotiations that might have brought us somewhere different than we are today. Uh, secondly, that as a result of that, the board has not made any uh, direct, uh, 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 given any directions, if you will, to the staff to make any fundamental changes in how we have operated. And I don't think you've seen it, anything significant uh, over the last year. In hindsight, <coughs> I think that the volunteers who are not <coughs> happy, to quote our president, not happy about this turn of events, uh, should have been more assertive and asked for more explicit performance benchmarks. Were there performance benchmark issues that were related to the decision to not renew a contract with an independent nonprofit corporation. But here we are. The, in closing, let me say that the focus for the board, as I understand it right now, is number one, that we have to manage this corporation properly. That's been our legal or fiduciary responsibility from day one. It continues to be so. And should there be cessation of operations on uh, October 1, we have to do that uh, in a way that 
is acceptable to governmental authorities. It's not negotiable. Secondly, and uh, no less important, we want to take very good care of our professional staff. They've taken very good care of us, and disrupting their professional careers is nothing that we're eager to do. So we're working uh, hard toward that end. And third, and I think uh, very much in keeping with what we're all doing here today, uh, we want to uh, really be vigorous in maintaining our dialogue with town officials, with <coughs> citizens in town, with CCTV, me CCTV members, because they are really are the ones who uh, uh, carry the big responsibility for this corporation, being a citizen membership-driven corporation. Uh, we want to ensure that those dialogues minimize any service disruptions. Um, and uh, to that end, I think this forum is a really necessary part of the community conversation. So I hope that's given you some uh, perspective from a guy who was here a decade ago with uh, Chris and a few other people when we pulled what was in the show but cable uh, and then Comcast out of the ashes and uh, <coughs> made, made uh, at least for a time a very robust uh, citizen operation. Thank you, Court, so much. Um, after Jane and Kate speak, and we're looking forward to hearing their remarks, I will ask a couple of questions that the League has formulated, and then we will turn it over to the audience to ask whatever questions they may have. Marge? Could the uh, speakers please uh, stand up? It's hard for... To absolutely, absolutely. That's, that's wise, and, and thank you, Marge. So, Jane. Um, <clears throat> So, I, I, you're asking me to stand, stand up, up, please. Oh, okay. Yes, here we go. <laughs> well, this is an exciting position to be in. Um, <laughs> um, and I just want to preface this by saying, Court had the long history, and I'm going to have the short experience. Um, although the process, as, as Court acknowledged, and I'm looking at my fellow select board members, Alice and Tom, has long predated my experience on the select board, and um, and you know what I what I chair this year will be passed on to Tom next year. So this is an ongoing discussion. Um, we I'm going to talk a little bit about the the committee charge that the select board is looking at. This is where we enter the conversation right now, um, and by a little bit of background history in terms of my own experience here, um, when the town manager and I first started talking about the, then it was really a discussion about a contract and, and, uh, and, and functions within the town. Um, we also immediately turned to, you know, what our goals were and what they weren't. And um, my own personal history, my, my family was in magazines. I, I was the assistant managing editor of a small newspaper. Um, my first question is, okay, where, where do we put the line between I, for lack of better terms, I'd say advertising and editorial. In other words, where's the money and the, the influence of the money and the operations and where is the content? And how do we make sure that, that the town understands clearly that that's what's the goal and what's not? Um, and that's really the, where the, the advisory committee process started. It's, it's how do we absolutely make sure that everybody understands and has input into um, the goals of safeguarding content for for the public. You know, this is public educational and government access. And while as a as a uh, that's beautiful, uh, <laughs> I stand and I have music. This is fun. Like <laughs> uh, doesn't have a soundtrack. Uh, as a select board member. I am, am, I'm excited to see more, as I think Court rep, uh, represented the town manager's interest in more and more and more coverage. I can only, you know, underscore that. Um, having, you know, recently this week had a couple of uh, uh, forums that I wish had been live so that we could have had more interaction. You know, those are the sort of things I can see lots of opportunity for, ironically, with uh, the uh, operational controls more more localized in Concord and, and more maybe accessible to quick decision making um, on the town's part more accessible 
to anybody that calls in, accesses in, um, interfaces off the off the the net or anything else. And that's certainly one of the goals I'd like to see going forward. Um, we have a a draft charge. I want to remind everybody that to the extent that, that they see our draft charge, that's what it is, because we're going to talk about this as a select board on Monday. So um, to say anything is set in stone would be premature. We've had one conversation about uh, the charge to date. Um, there have been some revisions going into it. Um, and so again, the select board in public hearing, or in public meeting, of which everybody here is obviously able to come to, um, is going to discuss this again. And um, you know, to that end, I want to focus on the things that, that this, this charge is really is, is trying to do. We're creating an advisory committee um, to make sure that there are citizens and entities in Concord with wisdom, with, uh, with experience, um, and with interests to help shape the content going forward. And also to make sure that that content is working well with the way the program is work, with the, the actual operations. In other words, that there, that there isn't exactly that. I suspect you know, you know. I think there's a a fear, as there is in many places in this country right now, of somehow an interference. And I think one of the important points in the the charge to the committee we've discussed so far is to assist the town manager and Minuteman Media Network, we'll get to that into a, another point, in, crea uh, in creating a citizen complaint review process. So it's not just, um, you know, here's a group of, of, uh, of committee members and a list of things they'd like to see. What do they do if, you know, do they have a redress process? And that's gonna be baked in. So this is a, um, I think this is a proactive and really positive uh, uh, committee. I think it's, you know, like every committee or board in town, it will be volunteer and it'll be as good every year as the, the time, energy, and expertise of those who are on it. And so that's a challenge back to us, all of us in Concord, to make sure that this committee is representative of of any of the concerns or any of the aspirations in this room and in other rooms. Um, so, you know, what are some of the duties and responsibilities? You know, first and foremost, to advise the select board and the town manager on all the matters con uh, concerning public education and government access television services, um, including, and this is an interesting idea that we've been uh, kicking around, including comparing what do we have here and what do, what do any of us see that works better somewhere else? So it's not just you know status quo. This is a living effort, um, and that's another thing I, I want to re uh, reiterate. Not only is this charge still evolving and is still to be discussed by the select board, but so is um, other than contractual pieces, other than uh, physical and uh, technical components. This is this is this is an evolution, much as court described. You know, where did, where did CCTV come from? It came from another process that wasn't working. So we're going through another evolutionary stage. And I, I certainly hope that everybody in this room <clears throat> understands that it's not the intent of any, um, any governmental um, activity, whether it be the select board or the town manager's office, to somehow um, take over and then silence a voice. The, pur the purpose is actually the opposite, which is to give that voice greater opportunity, not only to be heard, but input into it. Um, and sometimes, you know, sometimes how that gets run um, needs greater clarity in order to have uh, greater um, greater impact or greater greater um, range. Um, I'm looking at all of the uh, the different pieces of our charge right now, and again, it's you know to recommend broad policies on matters concerning public education and government access television, um, to ensure that the the network conforms to all the requirements of the you know there's going to be pieces of the um, the yawn that goes into this. You know what do we have to comply with? What do we have to do under the um, Comcast franchise agreement um, to solicit feedback? 
on the performance. You know, i.e., is this working? If it's not, there will be a clear process involved to, to respond, just like every other board and committee. There are going to be committee meetings. Those will be public. Um, so, you know, we want that I, as a select board member, would want to see active participation beyond, the, beyond this year's uh, appointed members of the access um, uh, of the committee. Um, again, to investigate and make re recommendations in response. So, you know, let's make sure that, that we're not just hearing them, but we're actually acting on them. Um, and then also a promotional piece to assist Minuteman in creating, developing, and promoting various specialized courses, i.e., you know, this is not static. It's, you know, where are we taking this? Um, I think we referenced our, our uh, the government um, study committee that was formed. That was a retrospective and prospective. There are going to be a lot of other things in town that, that come up that we don't imagine right now that I'd like to see inspire further. I mean, this is, again, if, if everybody in this room and other rooms does, engages, um, then we don't know what the, what the possibility here is. So I don't want to limit it, um, except to say that this is not going national. <laughs> I'd, like, I'd like to imagine that we have uh, enough to do right here. Um, and then, um, you know, again, there are other pieces, you know, to, to work on the renegotiation of uh, cable television franchise agreements, um, to uh, request provide or provide advice or guidance with respect to operations and tech, i.e., let's feedback on to the, um, the operational side. This would be the, you know, the editorial feedback into the technical and the, the general running of, of the um, entity. Because if it's not working for the programming, um, there needs to be a place, a, a path of discussion for that. Um, and finally, just like every other board and committee in town, there's an annual reporting option or requirement. So, you know, at the end of every year, we're going to expect to see an annual uh, submission to the annual report, and then there'll be yet another place where everybody can review what has happened over the year. Um, that's where we are in terms of the select board and um, our vision, uh, to the extent that, that I could call it that at this point, of <coughs> ensuring that our content uh, grows. It doesn't get smaller. Um, I think the court also referenced, and I'm sure that Kate will, will describe this, um, this is not about the, the fine staff of CCTV. This is not about, um, I'm not describing how that's going to work. Um, I expect that as a select board, we will encourage that, you know, if, it, if it's not broken, why would we try to fix that? Let's, let's incorporate something that, that continues to work well. I would imagine that, that we would want as, um, initial board members, or perhaps always bo uh, uh, on board, would be some of the folks that have been involved in CCTV all along. You know, there's wisdom. We're not looking to shut anybody out. We're looking to actually expand input um, in terms of this advisory committee. So that's that's the the thought from from your elected officials. Um, I'll let Kate, who gets the uh, sometimes uh, unwelcome but very important job of putting it all into nuts and bolts to describe exactly that. Thank you, Jane, so much. Okay. Hi, thank you for having me today. Uh, Are you all want, here? <clears throat> I was just going to explain that I'm just getting over a cold, so my voice is a little husky. I'm actually screaming right now. <laughs> um, so uh, I will make it very brief as best I can and then try to answer questions. So. Um, my name is Kate Hodges. Um, I have been uh, the assistant town manager uh, for three years today, actually, um, <laughs> which, is, which is great. Um, and I uh, would say that I am the, the champion of more. Um, I like doing more. I like seeing more. Um, I'm committed to, to doing more. And I have found that, um, that talking with the current CCTV staff and working with the town manager just to explore this opportun opportunity has been very exciting um, on, on my end. 
Um, I think that we can do great things. We can build on things that CCTV has done over the years. And um, I really hope to rely on you know, members of this audience, certainly on, on court, and, uh, and members of the current CCTV board to help us shape something that, that people can be proud of. Um, so today I'm just going to talk to you about the, the town staff's uh, vision and goals. Uh, all of the departments and divisions under the town manager operate under a goals and objectives merit-based system. So we sit down on an annual basis, sometimes more than that, and um, we review the select board's goals um, and we try to mirror our own department and divisional goals um, to further those missions. And so that is essentially what will happen with, uh, with the PEG, with the PEG um, process. We'll define goals that may change throughout the year, they may not. Uh, we may have the same goal year after year. We may have objectives that are different on how to reach that. Um, initially, what I believe our goals will be, particularly in the first six months, would be um, some expanded uh, government coverage surrounding some important issues. Uh, we like the ability to have more than one live broadcast going on at one time, particularly if Concord, I'm, I'm sorry, if Carlisle um, wants to remain a partner in this. So we have the ability to have uh, two uh, on-demand systems, two things running, and there's some technical capabilities that we need to deal with and some infrastructure that we'll need to have. We'd like to also make um, meetings and videos and you know things that are of high interest more available to people, either through YouTube or uh, dedicated Facebook or any type of live streaming or podcast, so that um, you can listen to what's going on, perhaps as a podcast on the train when you're commuting, without actually having to have you know live stream video. Um, we'd like greater community outreach. Um, my understanding in reading just past annual reports from the CCTV Incorporated um, is that the number of volunteers has really fluctuated throughout the years and in trying to talk to people who either once were a very vibrant part of it and are no longer or would like to get involved, I think there's an issue of intimidation. People think that they don't know how to operate the equipment, they're not sure how to edit video, uh, they're not sure how they can get involved or they have difficulty accessing the studio space on a regular basis because it's in the school building where we have to make sure that you know the, the door is locked and, and safe um, or parking isn't available. And so we hope to try to create uh, a substation. Um, right now we're looking at the 105 Everett Street location, which used to be the home um, for human services and recreation had a couple of yoga studios there. It's across from the Emerson Field. And we're looking at having that be perhaps a satellite campus um, for CCTV with an open door policy, with a classroom, um, with the ability for people to stop in, learn how to do things, pitch an idea to a staff person or persons that are there, try to figure out how we can, as a town, help you produce content. Um, we're looking to increase the number of trained citizens so that we don't have to have members of the CCTV Incorporated uh, staff, um, or we're, we're workshopping the name Minuteman Media Network um, f to replace CCTV, and so we don't want to have the staff members be out every every night of the week, and perhaps we have volunteers um, that may want to help us in those efforts. Um, like I said, better access to the valuable resource or for, uh, for public access <coughs> for number three. I'd like to generate a feel of community television where members of the PEG staff uh, feel like they actually have a seat at the table where they learn about events and we're able to sit down and say, you know, here are the meetings that are of high interest in this month. Here are the community events that are of high interest. Here are requests that have come in from the league, um, perhaps like this past Sunday's speaker. And here are all the things. How can we place this out? Where can we distribute our resources to make sure that we're getting everybody's needs fulfilled? And if we can, that we're able to communicate why we can't and then try to work on some type of mechanism to make sure that we can in the future. Um, so we want to uh, take steps to, uh, to try to reach these initial five goals. We have a draft um, memo of agreement that uh, the town manager and I uh, reviewed with the Carlisle um, Board of Selectmen at their last, last meeting on Tuesday, last Tuesday. Um, 
it's not sure uh, what they want to do and I think we'd be fine either way but we offered to to keep this as a joint venture it doesn't have to be forever it could be on a year-to-year -year basis um, so we're, we're actively you know talking to them and making sure that you know we don't uh, we don't leave them in the lurch and, and vice versa. Uh, we have a, as uh, Jane spoke about, the creation of the Cable Advisory Committee, and I would hope that um, we would have people who not only are well versed in the area of public television or in photo editing, or I'm sorry, in video editing, but also <coughs> people who are passionate about the goals that I just described, about better access and making it more of a community feel. Um, and we're looking at hiring um, one or two uh, professional skilled people, um, either you know members of, of the current uh, staff or uh, or perhaps people from the outside to help us bridge this gap to make sure that when CCTV's contract ends on September 30th and the town picks up on October 1st, at the very least you see the the similar amount or same amount, if not an increased and better amount. And the hope would be that. You know, as we come to uh, six months uh, into a year of having uh, Minuteman Media Network be up and running, that um, it will be better than, than what it was. And that's not taking away from anything that it is right now. I think it's great with, a, with many, many talented volunteers and staff. It's, my goal is just to make it better um, and to make it more accessible and, and bigger and something that, that we can all really be proud of. And that, that's the goal. Um, so. Thank you. That was so sure. helpful. That was terrific. Um, I, I begin by asking asking a couple of questions if I might, please. Um, <clears throat> there's a lot of archival <coughs> material right now um, that the CTV CCTV owns, uh, and that material is a, is really a visual documentary of the history of Concord and its discourses, uh, particularly with the select board, which is routinely covered, and sometimes the FinCom which is, has been more unevenly covered, um, not for any call of CCTV, but nonetheless not always covered. Um, how, how do you imagine, or, or in what way do we imagine, uh, making certain that those resources are not lost to the town, that they are readily accessible uh, to, to citizens who want to go backwards rather than forwards, who want to understand our history? Um, is there going to be an appropriate list and document you know, of documents that are available? This is all terribly important in terms of, of open government and accessibility. Um, myself, uh, the town clerk, and a member of our public and our public information officer have met with a video archiving um, uh, specialist and, and company. One um, that's out of Marlboro and one that's closer to the city to talk about how we can take. Um, older videos, um, particularly at the select board and FinCom meetings, town meeting, um, and create an archival system where we could have them be cloud-based um, on the internet, and also to turn them into podcasts so they're, um, you wouldn't see them visually, but you would be able to listen to them and um, be able to look them up just like you would in uh, library archives for, for books and, and records in that way. So um, certainly we are um, making sure that all of the history that is remains um, and perhaps is more accessible um, and, and able to be easily found. So um, the nice thing is that we're able to uh, work with some of the technology to shrink them into smaller files where you could download it uh, on your iPad and listen to it and then uh, delete it immediately, much like you would with a Kindle or Audible or anything like that. So. But thank you. That's, that's very helpful and very important. Um, who will determine uh, which of those to, to, to shrink and which of those to discard? Uh, how, how will that kind of decision making um, take place? I don't think we're going to discard anything. Um, why would we? There's no need. Um, in 2004, we had uh, video decks, you know, big chunky uh, blocks uh, that uh, would, would uh, hold the, the recordings. One of our first moves was to go to the archivists at the library to say, we can't store all this stuff. And uh, the library said, well, of course we can. Uh, however, one of our first big moves, and it was a big investment for us, a kind of bleeding edge back then, was to move our entire operation from the old video decks to the server technology. Uh, so that everything is coming out of a massive server right now, so it's all digitized, so it, it makes it much easier. Um, 
uh, I think uh, uh, Kate's being optimistic when she implies that this is going to be easy. There's going to be a lot of uh, inventory to do. Yes. A lot of inventory to do, but uh, I think uh, she wisely says it can be done. That's absolutely correct. Um, I want to uh, just make one thing clear, if I might, Diane. Um, we uh, talk about television here, uh, but in a sense we're uh, uh, giving ourselves their own story because most of our viewers, uh, increasing every day, are looking at it on their telephone, they're looking their at it on their iPad, they're looking at it on their computer. Uh, you can look at all three stations from this room on your telephone right now and see the live broadcast. So, although this is called Cable Television Advisory, we might be reminded, cable television is the source of the revenues. It's what's coming in for revenue. It's not what's going out for content. <coughs> That's, that, that, that is prudent. It, in fact, it perhaps dates <laughs> yeah. some of us who still turn to television. <laughs> I mean, literally turn to television, <laughs> turn it on and off, and, and listen that way. Um, I gather that, that on January 23rd, the Carlisle um, uh, uh, board, um, select board met and discussed whether they would go forward or whether they were not. And they were divided uh, in terms of, of that decision making. What are the implications were um, Carlisle to decide not to uh, to continue its relationship with, with Concord? Uh, are there uh, fiscal uh, concerns about that? Um, and, and how have we thought that through? So uh, our agreement with um, Carlisle and, and what's been, uh, I guess, agreed to on a staff level at this point is um, that the equipment that was purchased with and in, uh, is mounted at, uh, in the town of Carlisle's facilities will remain the property of the town of Carlisle. Similarly, equipment that is uh, mounted and, and here uh, at Town Concord buildings will remain the property of the town of Concord. And then uh, the shared studio space within uh, the regional high school will remain a shared asset between the two. And uh, if they weren't to continue uh, with, a, with a joint venture, then um, I think we would have a, a separate intermunicipal agreement that somehow uh, takes into account you know, the, this 80-20 split and, and where that came from, and that may fluctuate about you know, time. I, I don't believe that the town manager uh, in Concord and, and the town administrator in Carlisle are interested in, in doing an hour-for-hour -hour analysis. I think it's understood that there are Carlisle uh, students and Concord students yes, who exactly. are going to utilize the studio. We encourage it. We hope to expand upon it. And, and certainly, um, we, we would just be uh, open to some type of working relationship that would work for us. That would work for you. And, and along that same lines, in terms of just fiscal responsibility, uh, the, it, just for everyone to know, and I'm sure you do, but the financial fee that if you look at your Comcast bill or your Xfinity, bill, you will see that there's something called the finance fee. And we each, most of us, uh, spend anywhere from $5 to $6 to $7 a month we contribute. That accumulates in a rather remarkable way to almost a million dollars of income a year, 4.8% uh, um, of, of our of aggregate fees from Comcast come back to our town. That's a lot of money. Uh, some of that money was spent uh, to upgrade the, the high school everything from painting the walls to getting new equipment, an enormous amount of effort was put into that. Is it, how do we imagine this as being fiscally responsible to create yet again another studio mm -hmm. in a place um, at 105 Everett Street? I mean, can, can the thinking around that be explained? Yes, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm back to you, I apologize. Uh, it's money. <laughs> right, sure. So, uh, so we are not uh, necessarily looking to create as robust a studio as what the high school has. I think that needs to remain. Um, my understanding, and, and I am not a, a professional uh, by any means in, 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 photo, in uh, photo editing, in uh, video editing, um, but uh, we don't have a space necessarily that is conducive to kind of the dark room um, <coughs> taping. What we're looking for is to generate some type of drop-in classroom, um, accessible studio space that can be used at an ad hoc basis or even for classroom. Uh, I'm not certain who has been in um, the 105 Everett Street building uh, recently, 
but the uh, the downstairs area is, is quite nice. Um, it, it needs some updating as far as accessibility on the exterior, um, but it, it, has, uh, it has two restrooms and um, what were yoga studios. So it's uh, bright light and large windows, uh, hardwood floors, um, and, uh, and a separate small office. And so our thought would be that we could use some of the ex existing equipment, which perhaps may be just on shelves as extra, uh, and bring it down and some other town resources that we could have where it would be a, a classroom type space, which it had been used as classroom type space for recreation. Um, and, and so the large, you know, photo editing and green screens and all of that type of things would remain at the high school. We're not looking to duplicate that, but we're looking to have something where you could start a project or pitch a project or learn how to use some of the equipment here, you know, midday, perhaps when school's going on, and then uh, if, if you want to finish it up or edit or go up to the studio, we'll, we'll make sure that they're available. Thank you. I yeah. just wanted to add, I mean, yes. I think that, that what, what Kate's describing and what, sorry, and what we're envisioning <laughs> for the Everett Street location is really about how we bring, how we enhance citizen engagement here. Because as she's pointed out, having the studio space uh, at the high school does create some barriers to easy access. And so this is a place where there can be more, not less. It's an exciting idea. Um, first we've heard of it, the 105. Um, uh, I would remind us that uh, at night, the community education program in harmony with CCTV is offering endless classes. And we'll set one up if you don't like what you see for dates and times. Um, I'm going to guess that were the board of directors to have known about 105 as a novel idea, the board might have said, wonderful idea and but, we've long wondered why we uh, uh, aren't building out Harvey Wheeler. Putting a fixed camera there so you can throw three switches on the wall and pipe out of that building because it's such a uh, necessary building for community activity in this town. Absolutely. So I would hope yep. as these plans go forward, we open up the dialogue and try to get as smart as we can, be as creative as we can about where we put capital resources. Thank you, Kate. Kate, mm -hmm. has a response to that? Harvey Miller indeed is a wonderful location, but it's also um, the campus for the Carousel Preschool. With that comes um, the EEC regulations for child care facilities. And so we have to be careful about uh, having programming that's in there in the after school hours or having access to the building during the after school hours when we have the after school program and during the daytime hours uh, when we have the, the young children there. So um, while it would be, uh, well, it would be great and it's certainly something that we can look into, uh, the access to that building would be uh, equally as challenging as we have having it uh, in the high school because it is a school location as well. Um, perhaps uh, someday there is, uh, there's a thought of having the, the preschool be in a different location and I think that may free it up but um, as we all know, uh, you know, building space is at a premium right now. So but we did think of that and, and, um, and we hope to explore something along those lines, but I don't, I don't think it would be as, uh, as readily accessible open door. Thank you. Uh, questions now from oh, people who are gathered. Uh, Corey, you want to start first? Yes. Thank you. Corey Atkins. <clears throat> My voice is a little compromised today, too. Uh, I think many of us in Concord are sharing the same. Uh, symptoms. Um, <laughs> first of all, the first thing I have to mention is I am deeply concerned as a citizen of Concord that this is presented as a, a fait accompli. Yes. Um, because here, here. it's had very little coverage here, and it's a here, very here. critical issue. Um, for one thing, I went back to check the law because as the state representative for this area, I have made it a point in every single piece of legislation that I vote on is to give the towns and the citizens of the towns or the elected officials of towns to have the most authority. So when I have the option as a state official to say the town can vote on this, I do that because I think that that's what I'm charged to do is to defend guard and promote democracy. 
this process from the beginning until this moment does not meet the standards of a democratic process. Very it's good. just been, you know, from the law gives authority to the Board of Selectmen. When I called the Board of Selectmen, they said, the town manager said that he had the authority. I've not been able to trace that down, um, but that would have to be given by the Board of Selectmen. This is the meteor. This is, as Diane pointed out, the fourth estate. This is a moment in history for a politician to be defending the media. <laughs> but we all know here, here. <laughs> from, this month, from this year, we wouldn't have the country we have without an independent media, no matter you know which side they are <clears throat> promoting at that time. And then when I went, I, so I, I shared my thoughts with the town manager. And then I went to the station to see what was actually happening? Because I use that station quite frequently for shows to talk about what's happening in the Congo. And, you know, I, I soon got involved in the he said, she said. You know, the <laughs> town manager, the town wants more. The station tried to do more and they were told that they couldn't cover meetings. They'd go to the financial committee meeting. Finance committee would say, we don't want you to cover us. Yeah. But there wasn't the, you know, here, here we're going through all the steps they're going to take, but they never shared that they wanted these precise measurements or benchmarks from the station before they just developed them. So why are we going to spend lots of money, huge confusion, upset in the public to transition to something you can just enhance with the studio structure in place? It, it seems like a waste of money, a waste of time, uh, a waste of creative energy, because we've got, there have been some of us who've been in conversation. We have the time and the experience to do a lot of creative things. We didn't know it was an issue. Now we know we want to be part of the solution. Uh, but to me, and, 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 and I don't buy the Harvey Lewis thing, no offense, but uh, because we're in high school and but there, it, it seems like <coughs> we're, you know, if this isn't totally broken as a structure, why are we trying to fix it with doubtful authority structure? One of the things that, you know, I read in the law, that some towns do do this, have the towns operate, but most towns don't. But what the station should reflect and this is the phrase that caught me uh, sort of in the heart, is the character of the town. And what is the character of Concord? You know, those farmers didn't fight and start shooting guns at the old North Bridge so that government could control our media. In any way, no matter how good the government is, because we never know when it's not good. Unless we don't control the media by the government. <laughs> so I think this deserves a robust discussion, public discussion. I'm very, very opposed to any transitions here. Any help the station needs, I'm happy to offer as a volunteer to be part of that and um, to use the resources that I have to get more people to do that. But I just want to uh, make sure the record shows that I am deeply opposed to this transition. Thank you, Corey. I think your position is clear. <laughs> Kate, I don't want to put you in the vortex of having to respond to every, every comment. Is there, is there someone here who would like to, to address what Corey has just said? or um, mm -hmm. And then we'll turn to other questions. I think... Um, the needs of the town, the idea of wanting expanded services, uh, the idea of uh, an additional studio space, uh, this is not the first that those things have been conveyed. There was a, a manner in which to do that. We have, uh, myself, the town manager, members of the CCTV uh, board, uh, the executive director sat in rooms together for months and months and, and we spoke about things. Um, we don't make those items always public. 
um, because we want to be respectful of the people who are in those roles. I continue to want to be respectful of the people who are in those roles. Um, and uh, so I, I think that I feel confident that we have made, uh, the town has made it clear what we're, what we're wishing to see, what we're hoping to see. Um, 2015 was the, uh, was the first time that the town manager, the budget analyst, and myself met with the CCTV <coughs> board where the town manager um, described and <clears throat> really took quite a bit of time to say why he wanted to only enter into a three-year agreement. And um, it, was, it was very fair, it was, it was um, well-defined, and uh, I think that no one left that room not understanding um, what, what should be happening and what should happen moving forward. And, and I think, uh, and I'm, I, I don't know uh, exactly what the question was about the Harvey Wheeler thing, but we can agree to disagree. <coughs> Which is fine. Yes, please, the back room. Um, yeah, I'm Karen Kugel. I'm a board member and also a volunteer producer. For and, CCTV. Um, for CCTV. CCTV. Yes, yes. CCTV. yes. Thank you. for Thanks. CCTV. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, I would want to say that as you define yourself as the champion of more, I want everyone here in the room to understand that I would say at least 99% of everything that you say you want to be more, more of in the town, more coverage, more outreach, more meetings, uh, even the capability of turning things into podcasts. From a technical perspective, the people on our staff are very, very uh, skilled. And uh, you can have all of that. You can have all of that with the current uh, budget and that being paid for by a separate nonprofit organization that, by the way, is paid for not by taxpayer dollars. It's paid for by Comcast subscribers. So subscribers can get, I just want to repeat this, you can get access to it if you are a Comcast subscriber, those three channels. However, you can also go online and access that same information from your computer as as Court uh, pointed out. So everyone still has access, in other words, even though you may not be a Comcast subscriber. But all of those things can and should be done, could be done, but we're never really, you weren't asked. You didn't ask us to do these things. And so this is part of the, the issue. There were complaints made, they were investigated and found out not to be true. Uh, the ratio, the 80-20, the complaints about mics, whatever, all of them were clarified. Moreover, in the contract between CCTV and the town, there is a, a, a vehicle for complaints on either side, either CCTV complaining about the behavior, payments, whatever, for the town, <coughs> on, the, on the part of the town and the town manager, but also for the town manager to make complaints or requests about the performance of CTTB. And none of that ever happened in any official way. And so there is a vehicle for that, and there's a 30-day response time. So none of that was taken advantage of, to my knowledge, and court can verify that, none of that ever happened, at least so far, in the 30-year time span, uh, the 30-day 30, um, 30 time span and in the three years. So my point is simply that all of the things that you're looking for could happen. The um, the mention of the additional satellite, we had no knowledge of that. There's no reason why these things couldn't happen being paid for by an independent, nonprofit organization. Instead, the more is going to be the, the absorption of the employees onto the, the town of Concord's payroll over time. Their benefits, their pay, their pension will now become a town responsibility, and then there's the possibility of limiting what could actually happen for the town in terms of programming. So that's a key concern and I really, I open that, if I'm wrong about that, then please let's open the dialogue about it. David. Thank you, Kate. David Allen, East Bridge Road. I'm shy, I have to sit down. Maybe you can hear me. Um, we started out with the Constitution here. Uh, that's really what matters in all of this. We'll come back to it. Uh, I say it at the beginning to be darn sure if we're not mistaken about where the pivot is here. But a bit of the detail. Uh, there's been discussion about, uh, in my parlance, the Cable TV Committee, 
One person in this room at least was not only a member but a chair a couple of times of cable TV committee a couple of decades ago. Happens to be the person sitting on this table here. Uh, and probably the one good thing we did to augment court's history is to begin the process because of a terrific uh, accountant named Dick Peterson who was on that committee with us. Uh, we began the process of moving away from Comcast into what was ultimately uh, CCTV. Chris Casey was the chair after me. He finished the process and finally it was set up. I was on the first board of CCTV. Uh, it's something I feel very deeply. Uh, we've noticed along the way here, uh, and it's already been emphasized, but it's got to be said again, there's been no reason given why this should happen. Guess what? If it ain't broke, don't fix it. <laughs> uh, and uh, you can't, in a setting like this, keep private these matters. If you have reasons, you have to say them out loud. Uh, it's already been stated by a member of the board, uh, the CCTV board, that there have been no formal complaints, period. Uh, what's more, I was told by a member of the select board a false reason. That's unacceptable in public behavior. That's unacceptable. It's been confirmed that it was not the truth. Hmm? So first of all, we have to have a reason. Uh, we don't have one, and we're not going to get one. Uh, what does matter here, and I've been to the point, and uh, I don't mince words, I guess I'm known for that. Uh, let's turn to some positives here. What's not been said is, what is this board? This really precious resource that CCTV has I was on the phone last night with Neville Webb, who's the president, and on the email yesterday with Sid Levin, the vice president. Who are these people that are giving their time gratis to Concord and have, and Carlisle, uh, Sid's in Carlisle, incidentally, uh, over years and years now? Uh, Neville Webb is at Fidelity, one of the largest investment firms in the world. And what's he do? He's responsible for uh, the department there that not only does video, but all of their media. Uh, Sid Levin uh, runs his own company. He does multi-million dollar video production contracts with Fortune 100 companies. Where did these two fellows start? They started in community TV 30 years ago. They care about this subject. Why did they do this? Because they care. They want to see this thing grow and become vital. They understand the business like practically nobody else in Concord and Carlisle are going to understand this business. They have a vision. I've sat and talked with them for hours now. Uh, they see where CCTV is. They know where it needs to go. Uh, they understand the dynamics, the technology, the business. 30 years they spent in the business, see where they've risen to, what they're bringing. They have assembled a board, and you just heard from one of the board members. Uh, they've assembled a board that's remarkably capable. You could not be more fortunate in this town to have this set of people. Uh, instead of uh, the, frankly, harassment and disruption that they faced the last three years, which has prevented the possibility for some of the things, we ought to be saying, thank you for goodness sake, and please, let's move forward. Uh, the, uh, the fourth estate, once again, coming back to the Constitution, is at the center of this. Democracy does not work without a vibrant fourth estate. We see Trump trying to discredit the media. He's trying to do what totalitarians always have done. In uh, Banana Republic, when there's a military coup, what do the generals do first? They seize the TV station. Huh? Uh, yes, other towns, a few of them have done this. We should follow along and make the same mistake like puppy dogs and think, thank you very much. Uh, this is conquered. We're supposed to be 
uh, intellectual leaders and to provide intellectual leadership to see that the issue of ads and uh, uh, an editorial was brought up. There are no ads in this. Uh, the money's there. It's already been stated. Uh, I'm with Corey. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Thank, you. But, Thank you, David, very, I mean, uh, uh, very much. Um, yes, in the back of the room, first, please. I'm Nancy Pierce. I'm with the Carlisle Mosquito. I have a number of questions, <clears throat> but I think the one that's most relevant to this form is the question about um, Carlisle and Concord's joint investment in the studio space at the high school, which was not reimbursed with MSBA funds. And I have heard varying explanations. If Concord takes it over, it takes over the TV, how Carlisle will be somehow reimbursed or compensated for the amount of money that we're going to continue paying as long as the high school bonds are outstanding through the assessment. I'd be happy to uh, do what I can with that, although I don't speak for the town government, um, nor do I speak for the regional school district, which is a completely independent political yeah. sub-entity. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> right? uh, uh, do you yeah. have an interest in that? Yeah. Um, <laughs> The, uh, first of all, uh, any uh, plan whereby CCTV would, uh, would cease its operations will require, in the estimation of our attorney, and we're following our attorney who has worked for the AG before, and so she knows how to dot the I's and <coughs> cross the T's in a way that will protect the town and the corporation, we believe, uh, uh, any plan would have to pass muster with the AG. That's what happens with corporations. Uh, I told you I wrote a check and sent it to the IRS and started a corporation. That's how easy it is. But closing it is entirely... <laughs> <laughs> uh, I can't tell you uh, how difficult it is. Um, attorneys shake their head and uh, make a vote payment when I talk to them about this. Um, <laughs> no pun intended, sorry. Uh, anyway, uh, uh, the, we should have no worry about access to that studio at the high school other than the practical issues that you speak of. Parking uh, is not fun and, uh, and so on. Um, but that is a shared resource of First of all, the citizens of Concord and Carlisle. And second of all, importantly, anybody who considers themselves a student in this town. So that means kids who live in Boston. That means anybody who's a student in this town has every right you and I do to uh, get the benefits of that, uh, of that studio. Um, so I think we should rest assured that will happen. Uh, I will offer up relevant to uh, Carlisle we have said to interested board members from Carlisle and uh, unaffiliated citizens who are talking about this, that should we uh, cease operations as a corporation, should we satisfy the AG that we have distributed our assets and everybody's content, uh, we would still have a corporate shell with zero assets. And we have offered that up to the town of Carlisle if, and again, this is not uh, CCTV encouraging it. Uh, we figure this is a debate that uh, goes beyond our board now, uh, as you well know. We, we've offered up that corporation as a shell, if you will, so that uh, citizens in Carlisle could plug and play if they wanted to, and do alone in Carlisle what uh, we did here. Because we started it alone in Concord. There was no assurance Carlisle was going to join us day one. So I hope that's helpful. Thank, thank you very much. Nancy Cronin. There, um, uh, there are a limited Can you number stand of, up for us? Thank you. There are a limited number of subscribers uh, to uh, the podcast, I should think. If that number should fall, uh, will our uh, will the uh, um, amount of money that we get from Comcast decrease? Yes. 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 <clears throat> I have to say both Neville and Sid have advanced uh, a strategy to deal exactly with that. Should that should that come to pass? Exactly. I mean, I think that the, the fiscal um, underpinnings of the, of the entire operation are clearly important. Um, 
and having the, the ability to see ahead and understand what the implications might be are equally important. There is, um, I guess you all know, we can volunteer and give money as citizens to CCTV. Um, and that, that is something that if you are interested in sustaining that, uh, is something that everyone, each, each of us could do, Julie. Um, well, I will just add on that particular note that I cheerfully told Comcast to hit the road three years ago and haven't looked back. So uh, <laughs> I think that is a trend for the future, and I'm glad to hear that the board has been thinking about that. Um, my question, and I say this as a person, as a musician, as an audio engineer, as a person who has spent a number of decades setting up small audiovisual labs specifically for teaching, when I hear you're thinking about putting something in on Everett Street, what I hear is the tone of voice of somebody who doesn't actually have a clue how this is done. I'm not hearing about equipment maintenance. I'm not hearing about buying new equipment. I'm not hearing about staffing levels. You're saying, well, a couple of people. How does that compare to who we have now? You're going to need more people to staff. If you have more equipment going in and out, you have to have somebody who actually knows AV equipment, not your IT engineer, who can check the cables and maintain the microphones and go over the cameras and check that all the memory is working properly. Have you done a budget for this? Because I haven't heard any numbers. I think maybe the town manager is, is oh, yeah. back. Has a Chris, Chris, I, 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 I was not. I just intended to sit at the back of the room and, and not really and hear what what was on people's minds. It seems like there's an opportunity here to comment. I'd like to correct. There is some misinformation. Let me just clarify that the um, the salaries and the benefit costs are currently paid out of the um, cable fund, and those would continue to be paid out of the general fund. The taxpayers of the town will not. Um, support the cable access programming in any way. So it's the an enterprise fund. It, it, could, it's, could, no, it's a revolving fund. It's a revolving so it's not technically fund. an enterprise okay, fund. Yeah, so, so all costs associated with operating this system by the town uh, would be paid for out of that fund. So in the, in the case that funds diminished, we would have to diminish our allocation of those funds. Um, uh, there's a per, you're on your bill, your cable bill, there is a per subscriber charge is 50 cents. Um, times uh, 2,000 subscribers or whatever, it's a modest amount of money, I think $1,500. The bulk of um, the, the revenue that comes in, uh, the select board negotiated, a, 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 I think, a great uh, agreement with Comcast that generates 4.8% of all Comcast revenue in Concord is paid into this fund, including the broadband, some of the more expensive programming. Uh, we get a piece of all of that. So uh, the revenue has gone up since uh, court originally uh, got things set up in 2000. And, for, I think it was on the order of about $150,000 a year. Exactly it's now up to about $400,000 a year. Um, the, the concern that that might go down is a legitimate one because uh, the town is offering broadband services, as you know, and we have 1,000 customers. So we've taken 1,000 customers away from Comcast, but seen no diminishment of their revenue. But I don't imagine that will go on forever. So I think we can foresee a time when uh, that revenue will decrease. And, you know, my, I think that's only a part of my concerns. We need to be prepared to respond to that. Um, and I find that the, com uh, the as C and let me do a little bit of history also, CCTV was wonderful. When, when Comcast or Cablevision operated the studio, it was horrible. They often couldn't hear the microphones. They wouldn't cover the meetings. Um, they wouldn't go live, uh, and, it, they, and they were unresponsive. They only had two people or one and a half people. It was a revolving door, so <laughs> it, it, you know, it, it, service wasn't good, and you couldn't really blame the people that were trying to do the best job. But CCTV really ramped up the service that we saw. Uh, uh, the, select, the coverage of the select board's meeting uh, in, uh, improved. Um, they tried to cover the school committee meeting, but the school committee resisted for a few. So there's a case where the CCTV was trying to do more, and the school committee said, wait, and eventually the school committee allowed them to do the coverage, and now they've expanded to the finance committee. Um, so I have to give credit to CCTV for the things that they've improved. And I was urged to stay positive, but the question is, why are we doing this? And of course, the answer is, you know, we want to do more. There's more things we want to do. But I'm also sensitive to the fact that the, um, I have a, a monthly meeting with the executive director of CCTV. Uh, we don't, sometimes we cancel the meeting, so perhaps we meet eight or nine times a year. Um, and that's where I communicate my interests, desires, complaints, and so forth. And I've, on a consistent basis, registered concerns when meetings aren't covered, 
or aren't go, don't go out live, or the audio doesn't work, or you know, they're delayed getting posted so the public can't review them, whatever it is. And my view is, as the chief executive officer of the town, I speak with the chief executive officer of, the, of CCTV, and I don't think I should have to go through any other channel. I don't think I should have to put my concerns down in writing. I've made it very clear. It surprises me that the board isn't aware of those concerns, but I've made my concerns known. And in signing a three-year agreement in 2015, I made it very clear there wasn't going to be another 10-year agreement. We were going to go for three years and see how we did. And CCTV uh, it did go through a succession of three executive directors in, in, in three years, I think it was. It was a short period of time where I was repeating the same requests, concerns, issues to three different people. And that's not the board's fault and it's not the fault of individuals. But I found it frustrating that I had to go to, I'm, I'm pleased to hear the league could go to CCTV or Corey Atkins could go to CCTV and get what they wanted. That's wonderful, that should continue. I didn't have the same success. And, um, and I, that was a concern to me. So that, that's, what, that, that's what we're trying to address is, um, um, my, my, I presented the superintendent of schools and I uh, presented budgets twice in November. League, league members were present for that. I requested those meetings be covered, but was told, that's a subcommittee of the finance committee, not the full committee. Therefore, the policy is not to cover subcommittee meetings. So the public didn't get to see the town manager's presentation, as good or bad as it might have been, um, or the superintendents on television. And I, I just thought, um, we have resources in the, in the bank. I'm prepared, I advise the director, if, if something isn't in your budget, that something special, an event like a recent funeral of a noteworthy resident that passed away, um, if something's not in the budget, and I appreciate CCTV providing some coverage of that uh, memorable event, um, if there's something that's not in the budget, we have resources, so let's find a way to to cover these extra events that weren't planned for and that sort of thing. And it's just been very bureaucratic and difficult to get, um, to get reaction. So, and I, Paul, I'm trying to stay positive. I don't mean to, the, the board's been great. The staff has been wonderful. We hope to hire many of the staff members of CCTV, so anyway. Thank you, and Chris, that's a, that's a very important, you know, set of piece of information. Let me start with, with Court, and then Julie, Peggy, and, and well, I'd like uh, response I, to my Yeah, I, I think it's important to say, <laughs> yes, okay. um, you'll have to cue me up on the question again if it's for me, but um, Not really. I, for I, I want to uh, say that what you just heard from Chris, Notwithstanding the lack of formal documentation of performance benchmarks that this corporation were to hit, I have heard those words from Chris. I want you to know that. How to quantify it and hit targets has been difficult for the board. And I want you to know that as well. So the devil is often in the details about how we satisfy different parties trying to come together. But I, I want it known that uh, that's, that's not brand new. That's not brand new. Um, Julie, you have a question that has not been addressed. No, it has yeah. not been. I would like to know about fiscal planning for taking over and building classrooms, um, adding a new studio, what your staffing levels are, who's going to maintain the, the equipment, and if you're going to engineering, if you're going to have be doing more, you're going to need <coughs> more professional people who are able to do that. And I haven't heard anything about that. <clears throat> oh, look, the time Sorry, can, and uh, uh, Kate can e easily answer this question, but I, I just, I think it's important to note, and I apologize to the two select board members that are here, uh, Jane is aware of this, but the two other board members heard this last week for the first time also. It's a concept that we have in mind. Um, that we want to, one of the things, yeah, the, to get more people involved, one of the things we could do is create higher visibility, and actually the idea for this came during my negotiations with CCTV. They said they wanted to rent some space on Main Street um, so that they could get higher visibility, get more volunteers. They're trying to really drive the volunteer part of it. And, they, and to do that, you need to be visible. Uh, yes, but you also need professional expertise so to maintain the equipment. It, it's and a concept to, that uh, has not yeah. been dis, does not I've been seen this concept before. Okay, so I'll, I'll, <laughs> we'll mark that I've down as you're not a favorite. For this concept but we before. have not taken it very as far as discussing it with the select board, so we, I'll mark you down as not in favor of it. But well, I'm I think gonna it's going to cost bosses. you a lot more money than you think. Fair there. enough. <laughs> so, there, again, fiscal questions Sorry. that kind of yeah. underpin. Yeah. Uh, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I want to thank our town manager for that um, 
very moving and authentic statement. Thank you. It's nice to hear you in that context. Thank you. Um, I am I am um, opposed to the town acquiring CCTV on principle. It is what has been mentioned before by Corey and David for this state independence. Uh, and I want to, I'm sorry? I don't know. Um, and I want to announce that Mark and I have uh, a town meeting warrant article about reversing the town managers and the summit board's decision. Uh, I don't know what kind of authority town meeting has on this. Uh, I, we need to discuss that with the town moderator, I believe. Um, I want to uh, say that if there are any problems between the current CCTV board and the town managers on the select board's request, then, then just form a, set, a different entire other board. <coughs> just just it has to stay independent. Um, you, you, Jane, you, in your remarks, you already made some statements I, 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 that are very well intended, but already uh, suggest government interference, well intended interference, like help shape context. This is not going to be national. I am not saying it should be national. Or, or, but, but it should be able to be national if people want to go on and make it national. The helping shape context, I, I actually uh, have slight disagreement with even court statements about how to, how to not make it focused on hate speech because um, nobody wants hate speech. But again, uh, yes, you can go and try to get nice shows on there, but the best uh, uh, resistance to hate speech is to have people go up there and speak against that hate speech. So uh, I, in other words, all these, all these uh, comments about an advisory committee with wisdom and experience or uh, quality of content, these things do not fit into freedom of speech and the independence of the press, no, ideas. So we really need to have uh, an independent press no matter what. And, and if you're not happy with this board, just pick another board. Uh, I mean, I, that's, I'm not going to get between the, in that battle. But on principle, it has to be independent. And uh, otherwise, it is, I know, I have observed enough in our town process that sometimes the board, the select board and the manager or another board, they, they, they can try to make things go smoothly and therefore um, uh, try to cover up the revelation of past wrongs in order to go forward smoothly now. And even that is not independent enough. And more importantly, I know everybody here I sense that everybody here has very good intentions. So this is not about anyone here. But we don't know who will be our future town manager. We don't know who will be our future select board. And so the press has to remain independent no matter for that reason. Thank you. The witching hour is upon us. We can take one more question. Pete. Oh, uh, maybe I'll, uh, uh, one more I'll, I'll yield to Carly because she actually was on. <laughs> she knows about stuff. I did, yes. I did. I, I'm a member of the league, I'm a member of CCTV, I'm also a Comcast cable subscriber here in Concord, and I also happen to be the former um, Department of uh, Telecommunications Cable Chair of the Cable Division, so it was, I was in the unique position of working with towns with their citizen advisory councils, with their public access channels, with Comcast and the other cable providers, and see how the whole industry interacts with each other. And I have to say the most effective piece is to have an active citizen advisory council, having those people involved, because they can act as kind of the negotiators between any disputes between the paid access company, 
and the private organization and the town. Here, we're missing that gap. And it's obvious that in this almost like a divorce-like situation, we don't have a mediator. So what we really need, and I've urged this to this board before, is to have an active citizen involvement through the Citizen Engagement Council. Now, I've had the pleasure, I think, of reviewing the Comcast, Comcast, Concord Comcast Franchise Agreement, page one to page two. I've reviewed the Carlisle Franchise Agreement. I've reviewed the contract between CCTV and Concord. And with all that background, and with my experience with the department, granted, I did retire two years ago, so I don't have time to do this stuff, but with that background, I see that the town is within its legal rights to do what it's doing. There has been a loss of faith between CCTV and the town. And without having this um, citizen advisory group to help moderate and mediate some of these disputes, this relationship has fallen apart. So I'm in favor of moving forward, looking towards more progress, seeing what we can do to make it more better in the public, the education, and the government sectors. And I encourage you all to work together instead of being such a divisive approach. Thank you. I'm sorry, it's 11 o'clock. I know there are more questions and more commentary, and I certainly urge you to stay and have that, that conversation um, informally and, and not in front of the, um, not being uh, uh, televised. I want to thank everyone for coming. Uh, you, 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 you went over treacherous roads and certainly treacherous sidewalks. I kind of skated in this morning. Um, so uh, thank you for, for, for doing that. Thank you for being here and expressing perspectives and points of view. Um, Kate, I want to thank you. You did a beautiful job, I think, in terms of expressing the goals that you would like to see us pursue. I, was, I found myself nodding with every single comment. Courts for the history that you provided us and a sense of the, the, the longevity with which this town first promulgated the program and has connected it. And Jane for speaking for the, for the town and the way in which we will go forward and think together collaboratively um, about what might be the best resolution. Um, in the meanwhile, uh, as we head into all of that, I'd like to advertise. Advertise. This is the advertise. Great for a commercial announcement here on CCTV. On CCTV. I don't know. I know. There's a, there's a winter breakfast um, that the league is hosting uh, on February 10th in which Dr. Mara Bernstein is a Tufts research expert on gerrymandering. And do you think you understand gerrymandering? Wait till you hear her. She's absolutely amazing. Um, so I really urge you to come. I urge you to sign up quickly because there are places where we'll, we'll be going. Um, and and it's, it's, a, it's a wonderful opportunity for all of us. Uh, so please come. Please join us again February 10th from 9 until 11 at the Colonial Inn. It's only $20. I mean, that's cheap. For, breakfast. <laughs> for a fabulous for breakfast. breakfast, great collaboration with good friends and hearing a fantastic talk. So, thank you all very much, and thank you to CCTV for covering this.